This video is sponsored by Skillshare. I'm gonna walk you through two methods for animating flames. The first is super easy and fast, and the other is a little bit more advanced. You can follow along with me step by step because I've included my project files below for free. And if you've never animated in Procreate Dreams, you may wanna check out my beginner-friendly tutorial. Our first method is gonna use the warp tool. And so I wanna show you how the warp tool works on the candle wax right here, because it's a little bit easier to understand. My wax is on its own uh, track right here and I'm going to add a warp keyframe and I'm just gonna use the four by four grid and then I'll come to the end here. So this, what this grid does is it kind of pins everywhere that there's a red dot, it is pinning that part of the image in place. And if I drag one of those pins away, it's going to pull part of that mesh and it's going to try and keep the other parts in the same place. So it's gonna affect the mesh right, like the, the squares right next to it but it's really cool because basically I'm just making this wax melt down while the top of the wax is staying still. So if I play this back, the wax is just slowly dripping down, melting down. So I'm gonna try the warp on the flames. All of the flames are on a single track and I'm going to come in and add a warp keyframe and I'm gonna keep the warp mesh at four by four. So if I zoom in over here, I can see that there are a couple of nodes right next to the flames. And if I just experiment, I can see, okay, I like this effect a little bit more than I like this effect. Once I know which node I wanna use, I'm going to turn on the perform mode and I'm just going to animate this flame moving around until I get to the end of my time frame. So once I finished one flame, I'm going to come into the next flame. I'm gonna to come to the beginning of my uh, timeline and I'm going to stay on the same warp track right here and I'm going to animate my next flame. And finally, I'll do the same thing with the last flame. And here you can see the final effect of my flames. Now this works really well when the flames are all on one group because the mesh is really large. But what happens if I have a single flame right here and I try to add a warp mesh onto, onto here? Now if I try and play with these, my gosh, it is, I'm gonna have to like move many of them in order to get this flame to flicker instead of just grabbing one handle of the mesh. That is like not fun and not easy to do. So I actually have a workaround for this. So the reason that this is really difficult is because the mesh is very tight. Like there's not a lot of space around here. So what I can do, I'm gonna delete that warp. I'm gonna go into paint and draw mode and I'm going to eye drop the background color. And on my single flame right here, it's just that single flame, I'm gonna just draw a little dot, which you can't see because it's the same color as the background, there and there. And now if I um, see the bounding box of the flame is much, much larger than it was before. And if I add a, a warp mesh on here, now the warp mesh is much larger. So if I just grab one of these nodes, it's gonna affect the flame much more easily. Next, I wanna add a little bit of flicker to my candles. And there's a couple of ways that I can do this, but the way that I'm going to try is I'm going to make this glow right here. I'm gonna make that fade in and out. So to do that, I'm gonna add a opacity filter and I'm gonna use the performance mode again. So it's gonna automatically record my animation and I can just lower that opacity back and forth. And if I play it back, now it creates a real flicker in my candles. So this method works. It's a totally valid way to animate flames. But I wanna show you another method that creates a more flickering, realistic looking flame. And to do that, we're gonna use an animation technique called the wave principle. So learning the different animation principles is actually what helped me improve my animation skills the fastest. And if you'd like to dive even deeper into more animation principles, I've created a full class on animation for beginners in Procreate Dreams, which is available on Skillshare, who are kindly sponsoring this video. So in the class, there's four projects with files like I've got with this tutorial, where you can learn all the different tools in Procreate Dreams and practice animation principles at the same time. In fact, you can even get the class for free because the first 500 people to use my link get one month free trial to Skillshare. The cool thing about Skillshare is that it's the largest online learning community for creatives and there's tons of teachers teaching animation principles and even different animation softwares. 
Skillshare has this thing called learning paths, which is essentially a curated collection of classes that will guide you through the steps of learning a specific skill. For example, Tonico Pontoa has this curated learning path where you'll get the basics of 2D animation fundamentals, then how to create a storyboard, character design, character animation, and then creating background scenes. And if you're a fan of my teaching style, well, I'm a top teacher on Skillshare and I've got a ton of classes that you might also find helpful. Back to our flames here, we're gonna be practicing the wave principle. And if you're unfamiliar with the wave principle, I do have a tutorial that breaks it down in depth, but the gist are that these flames are moving in a waving motion that creates that flickering movement. To create a basic wave like these waving lines, all we have to do is draw a literal wavy line and pull it across the screen. So I'm gonna use this pink curvy line as a reference. In order to make a looping flame, what I wanna do is I want to move this line straight up and down. And what I'm going for is I want the peak of this curve right here to roughly match up where the peak of that curve is right there. Because when those two match up, they'll essentially create a loop. So I'm going to add a move and scale keyframe and I'm gonna go like five or six frames over and I'm just gonna move this up so that it's approximately right there. It doesn't have to be perfect. These flickering candles, they're not gonna be perfect at all. Now I've got my reference moving. So this is moving up and down, right? Now I like to make sure that this is moving in a linear easing. So if you want to check your easings, you can tap and hold between those two keyframes, choose set all easings and choose linear. So now I want to add a new layer above my flame reference. And this is going to be the track that I'm gonna draw my actual flame on. So I'm gonna go into flipbook mode so I can draw my flame. So the first thing I wanna do in my first frame, I'm going to draw a circle for the base of my flame and I'm gonna decide how tall up I want the tip of my flame to go. And I'm gonna follow this curve right here to create a teardrop shape. And then I'll fill this in really fast. And I'm gonna to hop to my next frame over. Now, I want the base of my flame to stay in the same spot as it was before. So I'm gonna draw the circle in roughly the same spot. And I know that the tip of my flame should be about this height. So it's gonna be right about here. And now I'm gonna follow the curve of this line right here to create that teardrop shape. And if I hop to my next frame, I'm gonna draw the circle at the base. I know that this is the height, but you can see that the reference line, it's curving this direction now. So I want my teardrop to curve this way, as opposed to it was curved that way before. The height is right over here, but I'm gonna curve it even more than the last frame. One more. Following that new curve. And if I, if I tap to the next frame, you'll see that my reference line is not moving anymore. So I know that I've come to the end of my loop. So I don't have to draw any more flames. So let's check this out. I'm gonna turn off my reference image so that I'm just seeing the flame. Check that out. I think that's a really effective flicker. So at this point, I could come back into flipbook mode and I could draw the center of that flame if I wanted to. Now, I don't have to draw this flame over and over across the entire timeline. I can actually group all these drawings by going to the timeline select tool, grabbing all of these, tapping and holding and choosing group. And now I can just duplicate this across the timeline so that my flame just continues to flicker. And I can do the same thing for the other two flames. Once I'm happy with one of my candles, it's time to move my flame reference to the next candle. But if I just try and grab this and move it, it's gonna eventually float back to where it started. So I'm gonna need to reset these keyframes. I'm just going to tap and hold between the two of these keyframes on the keyframe track and tap delete and move. Now I can grab this flame, this flame reference, and I don't want this flame to look exactly like this frame. So I'm actually going to just uh, start this keyframe a little bit lower. And so I'm looking to match this part up with this part. So I'm gonna go over like five frames or so, and I'm gonna move this approximately up to there. And then I'll create a new track above my flame reference and I can come in and start drawing this second flame. Now, another way that I could make these flames look a little bit different from each other is that I could start with a different ball shape. So maybe I want this ball shape to be a little bit more oblong and the top of the flame will be right there. So 
so to me, I feel like these flames are flickering at a different rate and they are a different shape. From here, I'll add that center of the flame. Now at this point, I could group these tracks that I've just drawn and then duplicate them across the timeline. But to save a couple of steps, I'm actually going to draw my final flame over here on the same frames as this so that I don't have to duplicate so many different groups. Now, since both those flames are drawn on that same track, I can group them and I just have to duplicate that the one time across the timeline. Now, if this moved a little fast for you, remember you can get my Skillshare class for free using the link in the description. That class is gonna walk you step-by-step step through all the tools much more in depth. Short on time and just want a really fast but thorough breakdown of the tools in Procreate Dreams? Then you can check out my 15-minute tutorial here on YouTube.